All right, good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight, I'm talking about traumatic brain injury inducing psychosis. <clears throat> I'm talking about this because we discussed the hippocampus, your memory area, as it's termed, the hippocampus. And technically, you have two of them, so the hippocampi. And uh, the hippocampi are incredibly important, not only to memory, but regulation of so many brain functions, particularly stress-based responses and dopaminergic function, dopamine function in the anterior part of the brain. So tonight I, uh, I read an article and I just wanted to bring this to you. We do have viewers who are really interested in this topic. I will say, and good evening to everyone who's joining, I will say that uh, psychosis is not a common sequela or event after traumatic brain injury, but it does occur. <clears throat> also, uh, for those of you who have known someone with a severe TBI, you may have been able to note some dramatic changes in brain function, and psychosis can be one of them. And clearly we know that there are other ramifications of these brain injuries or subconcussive head impacts in the form of uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and I've talked about that at length. Um, so right now, I just think it's cool that we talk about our hippocampus because I think it's a part of the brain that not a lot of people have a great understanding of, and I think uh, by understanding this better, parents can have more information to make educated decisions about their children playing contact sports, or if you know someone who has uh, been through a moderate, severe uh, TBI or even a mild TBI, making sure that they get appropriate care, good objective testing for their condition, I would say is really important. So I'm gonna show this in the stream. Actually, let me, uh, I'm actually going to put this one in. We're gonna hide, show this one in the stream. There we go. <laughs> so this article just came out. It's from Johns Hopkins Brain Communications. Hippocampal atrophy is associated with psychotic symptom severity following traumatic brain injury. Michael J. C. Bray is the lead author. For those of you interested in schizophrenia, uh, I feel that Johns Hopkins is doing some of the best work. I believe they, they were given a, a rather large endowment to study underlying, underlying causes of schizophrenia. They were largely the center, in my opinion, or my observation, that did a lot of the foundational research regarding connections to gluten and connections to uh, the parasite Toxoplasma gondii and connections to dairy intolerances, uh, colitis, um, gastritis, duodenitis, seen in a lot of patients with schizophrenia. So all that elucidates a significant gut-brain connection to the disorder. And I've done other broadcasts on schizophrenia, probably time for another one. Um, nonetheless, with all that tangential information here, this group from Johns Hopkins is looking at the density of the memory area in those who develop psychosis after TBI. So we'll hide this and now we will bring this one in. So this is a really lovely graphic. And so you can see in the, the pre-TBI state, excuse me, in the pre-TBI state, uh, we have normal prefrontal dopamine function. And we have, this represents our hippocampi, you can't see my mouse, but these green little tail-like structures in the center of the brain represent the hippocampi. And so after a traumatic brain injury, they're demonstrating that they've observed increased dopamine function in the prefrontal cortex. And they have observed in TBI patients who have psychosis that they do respond well to uh, the D2 receptor, it's the second dopamine receptor uh, modification through psychotic medications or anti, excuse me, antipsychotics, uh, both the classic and, and the next generation ones. So they know that by modulating dopamine, they can affect their psychotic symptoms. They also know that these TBI patients, uh, just a, a little side note, schizophrenia, the psychosis associated with schizophrenia, 
uh, involves the positive symptoms, which you would know as hallucinations, but then there's typically a negative period as well, where um, there's gonna be a flattened affect, they're not gonna have hallucinations as much, and they call it the negative phase of the negative symptoms. What they see in these TBI patients is that they have the positive symptoms, but they don't really demonstrate the negative phase as you would typically see with schizophrenia. So that's interesting. These authors also comment that we're learning that moderate to severe TBI really is a neurodegenerative disorder, which needs to get out there. A lot of people are talking about TBI. I don't know how many people are saying this, but in essence, areas of the brain do degenerate. And I talked about that a couple of years ago where you can do volumetric scans on rugby players or football players and you see degeneration largely in the hippocampus. And one of the um, newest modalities being discussed to detect chronic traumatic encephalopathy is to see not only atrophy, that's shrinkage of the hippocampus, but the middle part of the brain collectively referred to as the limbic system, which the hippocampus is intimately involved in. Uh, the limbic system is our emotional brain. So not surprising, that area of the brain is gonna be involved with a lot of the symptoms of CTE involving you know, impulsiveness, aggressiveness, things of that nature. So they demonstrated here with these TBI patients who have psychosis that they do have atrophy in the hippocampus. Here you can see the head of the hippocampus, the body and the tail down at the lower part of the diagram. And it seems this hippocampus, or, or hippocampi rather, are really, really important for controlling the amount of dopamine we have in our prefrontal cortex. Dopamine is so analogous to uh, Goldilocks and the oatmeal. So we don't want it too hot, we don't want it too cold, we want it just right. Too much dopamine can lead to psychotic symptoms. Not enough dopamine can lead to symptoms like Parkinson's disease. And that's why when these two conditions are treated, Parkins, excuse me, Parkinson's patients will develop symptoms of hallucinations as we push their dopamine higher. Whereas those with psychosis, lots of times as their dopamine is blocked, can then develop symptoms of Parkinson's. So dopamine, we don't want it at the extremes, we want it just right. And the hippocampi are really, really important for modulating our prefrontal uh, mesolimbic, as it's termed, dopamine production. So now you have uh, the newest of the newest information on this esoteric aspect of TBI, but the take home point is that in 2021, we have way more tools for assessing the brain than we did five years ago, particularly 10 to 12 years ago. I frequently get the question, should I let my child play lacrosse? Should I let my child wrestle? Should I let them play soccer? Should I let them play uh, American football? Uh, if you do decide to do that, just know that there are many inventories now readily available, like the impact testing for cognitive function, so you can get a baseline of where someone's brain is at. Volumetric MRI scanning is not available everywhere, but it is available in a lot of the major cities. And so that's another thing. If it were me, if it were my child, I would really consider and say, hey, I think that I would like to have a picture of what this person's brain looks like before they go into this type of activity. And let's make sure that we're not seeing signs of neurodegeneration as they go through their time uh, playing sports. That's my opinion. Um, some people would disagree, probably it's not going to be a popular opinion if this ever got out there fully, but uh, nonetheless, I think that's really how we should be doing it. And that's not even bringing into account diffusion tensor imaging, which looks at white matter tracking. Know that there are certain, um, there may be certain things that you can do from a holistic perspective that may slow down some degenerative processes. There's a lot of discuss in the discussion in the literature regarding certain supplementation protocols. Certainly certain medications have efficacy in reducing atrophy in the hippocampi. So um, there's a number of things that can be done, but I like to give you the information. It's Friday night, it's late. But uh, I think that's it. So send me any questions you have and have a lovely weekend. Signing off, uh, Dr. Randall Gates, again, board certified chiropractic neurologist and chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. All right, take care, everyone.